you so much for joining us today. Uh, we are recording, so just a heads up about that. Um, we're so happy to have you here today. Uh, my name is Gina DeSalvo. I'm one of the coordinators um, with Kathleen Donovan down at the Parent Resource Center uh, in Arlington Public Schools. Um, we're with the Special Education Department. But today we're partnering with the Office of Student Services and one of our fabulous school psychologists, Jenny Lambden, to talk a little bit about the Elementary Social Emotional Survey. Um, but before we dive into that, Kathleen and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the Parent Resource Center, what we do and how we can help. Um, we offer confidential consultations with families um, about anything related to their child's disability, learning needs, or anything going on in school. Um, we have a lot of parent learning opportunities like we are doing today. We offer lunch and learns and different courses. We have a great lending library. Uh, we have electronic resources uh, as well as physical resources uh, free of charge for you to access. And we're happy to help curate some resources to meet your needs. Um, and we partner with a lot of school and community groups. Um, so without further ado, um, I'm gonna let Jenny take it away and we're gonna learn a little bit about the survey. Okay. And I'm going to just interrupt for one sec, Jenny, before we toss to you. Emma, would you just mind greeting anybody who might be on the call in Spanish and letting them know that we have subtitles generated and that we can support them if they have any questions afterward? Sí, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Emma y um, la, la presentación, como ven, va a ser en inglés, pero va a haber subtítulos al español. Y si tienen alguna pregunta, por favor, escribirlo en la cajita del chat. Gracias. Ok, Kathleen. Okay, thanks so much, Jenny. We'll toss to you. Thanks for offering the session for us today. Sure. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, as Kathleen and Gina said, I'm Jenny Lambden. Um, I am representing the Office of Student Services today, and we're here primarily to talk about um, the social emotional learning survey that was um, previously administered to students in APS. But um, so Today, um, our kind of takeaways, what we're going to be discussing in our time together um, are um, just the definition of, of social emotional learning and why it's important. Um, we'll discuss the SEL survey um, and what it measured, um, what your results mean, um, and then we'll follow up on a little bit about how to help um, develop your child's um, social emotional learning skills and also who you might contact at school if there are any concerns or questions about your child's social emotional development or um, the SEL survey itself. So um, we'll get started um, just by defining what social emotional learning is. And um, the definition that we use in Arlington Public Schools in the state of Virginia comes from the Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning. Um, you may have heard this referred to as CASEL. Um, and CASEL is, um, it, it devises a framework for social emotional learning. And, and we define it as that process through which children and adults understand and manage emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships and make responsible decisions. Um, in Arlington, um, we also use the Virginia Department of Education um, SEL guidance um, framework um, to help us know what is expected of students at different developmental um, junctures in their life. And what we know is that um, SEL is meant to not be something that's in addition to academic learning, but it is meant to um, boost academic perform performance and deepen um, students' engagement with um, their learning and their communities. Um, SEL in Arlington Public Schools and in general is not meant to serve as um, therapeutic. It is a way that we um, help students build and um, build relationships and, and skills that they need to, to just be healthy and well-rounded students. Um, we are not setting forth any particular agenda. We want students to understand different perspectives and share their ideas about their perspectives and thoughts. Um, and we really want to shape student social emotional learning um, as, as needed within the school and the community and their families. In 
um, the CASEL framework. Um, CASEL identifies kind of five broad um, competency areas. Um, and those are as follows. Um, Self-awareness is first, and this is really how students can accurately um, recognize their own emotions and thoughts and how emotions influence behaviors. This includes um, how students learn about different emotions and explore their own personal strengths and challenges. And that looks different across developmental spectrum. Today, we're going to focus on elementary age students. So for example, um, when we're thinking about self-awareness for a kindergarten student, um, we're hoping that they can learn to name the different basic emotions, happy, sad, mad, um, and be able to identify those in themselves and understand what each of those emotions mean. Um, at upper grades, at fifth and sixth grade, um, fourth and fifth grade, we are helping students learn how to differentiate different complex emotions. So there might be a difference between feeling overwhelmed and frustrated and angry um, and using their emotions and being able to anticipate their emotions based on how their bodies are feeling, based on their body signals, based on the events that have happened, based on the situation that's happening. So that, that's a little bit about self-awareness. Um, Self-management is how students move from identifying their emotions and feelings and thoughts to how they're able to regulate those emotions and thoughts and behaviors effectively across different situations. So this includes um, learning and using different healthy coping skills that help students manage stress, help them um, develop their motivation for themselves and work toward different goals that they have set for themselves, either academic um, or non-academic goals. Um, so for example, in kindergarten, um, we hope that students can learn how to self-manage by working independently, not for ex that like extensive period of time, but just learning how to work on their own and, and to be able to ask for help when needed. At fifth grade, we want students to be able to um, persevere through challenges and setbacks. We want them to be able to identify when they're having a challenge or a setback and then use a strategy to kind of persevere through that challenge or setback. Um, for social awareness, this is how um, students take perspective of and empathize with others. This is how students are learning um, to understand different social and ethical norms for behavior. It's how they recognize um, the different types of resources and supports that are available to them in their family, in their school, in their community. Um, you know, in the early level, it's it's really identifying and recognizing that other people have feelings and thoughts and behaviors and strengths that might be different from your own. It's learning how to at a older at older grades, being able to express gratitude for others. It's being able to um, being able to see and recognize and identify when someone might be treated unfairly. Um, in terms of relationship skills, this is um, how students are able to kind of establish and create and maintain those um, healthy and, and supportive relationships with different types of people, with different groups, with different individuals. Um, relationship skills as a competency area also includes um, students being able to communicate effectively their active listening skills, to take the perspective of others and put themselves in other people's shoes. Um, early on, we want students to learn how to take turns and share and encourage others by complimenting them or being able to say what an active listener looks like and sounds like. Later on, it's being able to use those active listening skills to um, be able to listen and understand or try to understand how there can be multiple perspectives um, given a situation or an idea. In terms of responsible decision making, um, this is taking care um, to be respectful, um, 
to make respectful choices about your own behaviors and social interactions, to, to make de constructive decisions and problem solving. So in earlier grades, we want students to be able to recognize that there might be a problem, but there might be more than one way to solve it. And my behaviors, my actions have outcomes, um, positive outcomes or, um, or negative outcomes. It's being able to um, identify that there are multiple outcomes that can result from your own choices at older grades. Um, and so those are the kind of five broad areas. And within those broad areas that are all interrelated with one another, um, we do have different skill sets um, that fall within those broader competency areas um, that, that range across the developmental, developmental span for students. Um, and so we know that these are areas that students, you know, develop and grow um, throughout their lifespan. And really we wanna think about why are these, why is SEL so important? Um, well, um, SEL is well-researched um, and there are many very positive outcomes to the implementation of social emotional learning. Um, teaching and introducing students to social emotional learning skills and competencies and, and developing those competencies areas um, leads to increased academic achievement, um, improved behaviors. There is a strong return on investment. Um, so by teaching students these skills, um, they are able to uh, move forward in their life um, and be successful. Um, Research has shown that social and emotional development can be fostered. We can teach these skills. Um, we can teach these social and emotional skills. These attitudes, these behaviors can be taught um, using different approaches. Um, in Arlington, we're really helping students focus on um, being prepared for academic learning and building positive relationships with others, as well as um, helping helping school staff create these really safe, positive and productive learning environments for students. We do um, SEL in Arlington Public Schools. Um, we do align our social emotional learning with the Virginia SEL guidance standards and the CASEL framework. Um, and our hope is that through um, teaching SEL and APS, we're able to empower students with skills and knowledge and understanding that will help them make positive choices about their social emotional engagement. We hope to model and teach and reinforce those pro-social skills that can align them to college career and life readiness skills. Um, we want students to have opportunities to engage with people who might be different from themselves in a very constructive and collaborative way. Um, and we know that modeling, um, instruction, and reinforcement is the responsibility of everybody in the APS community. So social emotional learning is not just something that is taught by um, school counselors or um, school psychologists or school social workers as part of the student services um, program, but SEL is the responsibility of everyone in the school building, um, families, and community. One way um, that we have um, identified a need to be able to provide appropriate social emotional learning supports in Arlington Public School is to um, administer the social emotional learning survey. Um, and the purpose of this survey is really to serve as a way to, to collect data and information to help our educators um, understand what their students' general social emotional skills and competencies are. Um, and we use that data to inform our curricular and programming decisions. Um, in APS, this survey is administered to our students in grades three through 12, two times a year, um, so that we can um, 
gather information about our students' strengths and their areas for growth in those social emotional um, competencies so that we can um, build school programming um, across the entire school that supports our students' social emotional needs. Um, and the data from the survey is shared with um, parents are able to access their own students' results. It, all, it is also shared with um, the school division leaders and school staff so that we can um, create our own programs and our own school's action plans to support um, the needs of students in our buildings. Um, the first time the survey was administered, as you were aware, was at the end of October. Um, and students will also have the opportunity to participate in the survey again at the end of April. Um, and again, that data is used to help us really um, identify students' um, strengths and areas for growth. Um, the SEL survey, um, in this in the fall uh, measured for different competency areas to inform um, the school's focus in the SEL curriculum. The um, growth mindset and self-efficacy, it does fall under the, the competency area of self-awareness. And um, this fall, we were measuring growth mindset or how students perceive whether or not they have the potential to change factors that are really important to their performance in school. Um, are they able to um, perceive that they have ownership over their learning? Um, Self-efficacy, this, um, this looks at how students believe that they can achieve, um, succeed in achieving academic outcomes. It also looked at self-management such as how students are able to manage their emotions, their thoughts, their behaviors, given different situations. And then um, it also looked at social awareness and how students can take the perspective or consider this, the perspectives of others and, and show empathy towards those, those individuals. So those were the four areas overall that were measured in the fall survey. Um, and I don't think you can see it there, but the survey was offered to students in several different languages. The student just needed to indicate which language they wanted to um, take the survey in. So I think a lot of what you're, why you're here is how to find um, your own students' results. So in parent view, um, parents are able to um, access their students' results on the fall SEL survey. Um, and there's a summary statement. And so the way you can find that is to log into parent view. There is a document section in the left-hand side menu and a lot of documents might show up. What you're looking for are two different documents related to the social emotional learning survey. The first one is called SEL results report, parent guardian letter. And then there's another document um, that has your student's ID and name that's listed as survey under the document category. So that's a little bit. So you should be able to find your student's results in parent view. When you see that um, result sheet, um, you might wonder, what do these results mean? Um, you will be provided with um, information where the results range from one to five. Five represents strengths for the student. Um, and just if a student has a one or something below a five, it doesn't mean that, you know, there's anything wrong necessarily. It could just be that the student is developing skills in those area. It's an area of growth. It may be something to look into. It may be worthy of um, having a conversation with your student about their thoughts um, in that area that was that was evaluated. Um, and when thinking about it, there were um, Questions per topic. In the area of growth mindset, there were six questions. In self-management, there were 10 questions. In social awareness, there were eight questions. In self-efficacy, there were five questions. 
So and if I can interrupt you, we do have a technical question in the chat. Sure. Uh, what if the results are not showing up under documents in parent view? Um, if the results don't show up, it may be that your student did not take the survey. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so this, this, the report looks like this, and you'll see that there are two data points. Um, the first data point is from your, your child's um, responses to the survey that was administered in spring of 2022. Um, and then the second data point is the fall survey results. You'll notice that for self-management, there is only one data point self-management was not um, evaluated. There were not questions pertaining to self-management in the fall. So we don't have anything to compare it to. Um, also know that um, when you're looking at your students' results, um, it is a snapshot in time. If, you're, if your child were to take the SEL survey again today, they might have different thoughts about how they would respond to um, those survey questions, either because they've, you know, changed their mindset about something or if they've learned a particular skill or just something in their environment or situation or interaction with someone um, may have changed from day to day. So just know that it is a snapshot in time. When thinking about um, learning more about what is involved in a student's development of social emotional learning skills, it's really helpful to think about um, what is developmentally appropriate at different, at different age levels. Um, one way that you can um, explore that is through accessing the Virginia Social Emotional Learning Guidance Standards, which were um, created and, and put forth in 2021. Um, and so we do use these guidance standards to help drive our um, programming here in APS. So um, once you get a copy of the slides, you can you can click on, um, on this slide and click on the links to see what might be appropriate for or expected of students in different grade levels. In terms of being able to um, support your own student's child's SEL skills um, at home, we know that students develop these skills. We don't just develop these skills at home or at school. We develop skills when interacting with others in the community. We, we can develop our social emotional skills anywhere, really. Um, and so, um, we'll go through in different areas how we can promote or foster um, children's growth in different areas from the elementary level. So, for example, um, in thinking about activities that might strengthen um, your student's self-awareness, like I said, again, this is how students are able to accurately recognize their own emotions and thoughts and how thoughts and emotions influence behavior. Um, it helps this area is also where we're hoping and helping students be able to explore their own personal strengths and challenges. Um, as parents or family members or, or community members, we can help children um, develop these skills by being honest about our own emotions, by modeling, um, by teaching the vocabulary of emotions um, and supporting students as they're growing asking your child how they feel about certain situations, share how you feel in different situations using that age appropriate vocabulary, um, focusing on what your child's strengths are, talking about them, talking with them about what has gone well, but also um, giving praise for, for things you've noticed. You've worked really hard on this and I can see that you're really growing in X, Y, or Z, um, discussing ways that your child might be feeling and how, and how those feelings can influence their behavior in different settings. All of these help promote um, self-awareness.
um, growth mindset was one area that um, APS looked at specifically um, through through the fall and the spring, uh, the spring 22 and the fall 22 SEL surveys. Um, and we are going to watch um, a little bit about um, the power of yet. Um, Carol Dweck um, speaks highly about um, the power of yet and growth mindset and how how a student's growth mindset is integral in um, their success in academics and sports in whatever they choose to do. Um, so I don't know, Kathleen, if um, you're able to access that video. We'll just watch the first few minutes. Jenny, just let me know when you want me to stop it. And for everybody, we're going to send you a link with this, so you'll be able to watch it later. The power of yet. I heard about a high school in Chicago where students had to pass a certain number of courses to graduate. And if they didn't pass a course, they got the grade not yet. And I thought that was fantastic, because if you get a failing grade, you think, I'm nothing, I'm nowhere. But if you get the grade not yet, you understand that you're on a learning curve. It gives you a path into the future. Not yet also gave me insight into a critical event early in my career, a real turning point. I wanted to see how children coped with challenge and difficulty. So I gave 10 year olds problems that were slightly too hard for them. Some of them reacted in a shockingly positive way. They said things, oops, they said things like, I love a challenge, or, you know, I was hoping this would be informative. They understood that their abilities could be developed. They had what I call a growth mindset. But other students felt it was tragic, catastrophic. From their more fixed mindset perspective, their intelligence, their intelligence had been up for judgment and they failed. Instead of luxuriating in the power of yet, they were gripped in the tyranny of now. So what do they do next? I'll tell you what they do next. In one study, they told us they would probably cheat the next time instead of studying more if they failed a test. In another study, after a failure, they looked for someone who did worse than they did so they could feel really good about themselves. And in study after study, they have run from difficulty. Scientists measured the electrical activity from the brain as students confronted an error. On the left, you see the fixed mindset students. There's hardly any activity. They run from the error. They don't engage with it. But on the right, you have the students with the growth mindset, the idea that abilities can be developed. They engage deeply. Their brain is on fire with yet. They engage deeply. They process the error. They learn from it and they correct it. How are we raising our children? Are we raising them for now instead of yet? Are we raising kids who are obsessed with getting A's? Are we raising kids who don't know how to dream big dreams? Their biggest goal is getting the next A, oops, or the next test, test score. And are 
the carrying this need for constant validation with them into their future lives. Maybe because employers are coming to me and saying, we have already raised a generation of young workers who can't get through the day without an award. All right, so that's just one example of how we teach kids that we might not be the best yet, where we might not know this yet, but if we continue to um, reflect on our mistakes, if we continue to reflect on what we haven't yet learned, um, there is opportunity and room for growth. Um, a couple of um, different strategies that can help promote this is, um, you know, journaling either, you know, actually, if, if your student is not able to, um, you know, write and complete sentence and things, you can have these conversations at home. Um, but also just thinking about, you know, a time when you wanted to learn something new and how, how far you've come now. We don't learn how to ride a bike the first time we try, usually. Um, it might take some, some practice and some falling down and getting back up, but um, eventually, hopefully we get there. Um, if that's something we're hoping to, to be able to do. Um, growth circles is another um, visual example that we can um, use to help our, our students, our kids um, visualize what we can do, what we aren't yet able to do, and to think about a strategy for how we're going to get there. Um, Kathleen, can you advance? I think I lost the ability to do that. Thanks. Um, when thinking about self-efficacy, um, which is a subset of perceptions and beliefs within that area of self-awareness, we really focus at the elementary level on, on helping students be problem solvers. Um, and how, and thinking about how every problem that we encounter on a daily basis, whether it's a problem with our learning or a problem with a peer or a problem with a grown up, um, whatever problem that might be, we can think of it is, it, is it a small problem? Is it something that I can fix myself? Is it a really big problem where, it's almost an emergency and I need to get adult help right away. Um, or is it kind of a medium problem where I've tried myself and maybe I need to ask a friend or maybe I need to ask an adult, but really thinking about um, approaching problem solving from that, from that growth mindset and, and being able to take ownership of our problems and, and learn strategies and skills for, um, for solving them um, independently. So the next slide um, provides another visual for how we can help children be problem solvers. So, um, you know, is it a small problem, a medium problem, a big problem? And, and how am I feeling about it? And, and what do I want to happen? as a result of this, this problem. Maybe it's a small problem, but it doesn't really, it's not super meaningful so I can move away from it. Um, or maybe it's something that I need to think about in a bigger way and I want a different outcome next time. Um, so you can brainstorm different solutions, different plans, plan A, plan B. There are, are many ways. We don't always have just one way to solve a problem. Um, and then, pick the best solution that's going to work for you right now. Um, knowing that if that way doesn't work, we have other plans that we can, that we can, that we can try. Um, and then looking at self-efficacy, um, again, we can help students with if then plans. So, you know, if you want to study more for a test, but your time is limited, it could be if it's 4.30, then I have 30 minutes to study. Um, you know, if I want to go to practice at 5.30, then I need to start studying now. Um, 
helping reframe negative thoughts, thinking about um, turning what you can't do into what you would like to do or more positive self-talk or a more helpful thought um, can be helpful in, in promoting increased self-efficacy. Um, sometimes it's helpful to think about um, the best case scenario, the worst case scenario, and the most likely scenario. Sometimes that's a way that we can help students with problem solving. And then when our students are having those unhelpful thoughts, investigating them further, having a conversation about it, journaling about it, thinking about different ways. Um, you know, for some people they do this, for others um, they might do this. For you, what do you think is the best um, option that you can take? What can you do to help um, solve this problem for yourself? Or change this feeling that you're having that you don't want to have. Um, that's also an important um, strategy for, um, for, for developing self-efficacy. And then um, thinking about self-management, um, we really um, want to help students learn to manage their feelings and turn them into positive actions. Um, we acknowledge that all feelings are okay. It's what we do with our feelings that, that really matters. Um, and so we can, you know, start by modeling and prompting certain coping strategies. And then hopefully as students internalize those strategies, they are able to use those, those skills um, and coping skills independently. We can introduce visuals such as a visual feelings wheel and letting students know that feelings aren't all or nothing. There might be different um, kind of shades within those feelings um, and, and seeing that that visual through a visual feelings will, will can help, help students understand that. Um, sometimes just having a place to go that feels safe can help students manage their own feelings and emotions. In schools, in a lot of our sc um, schools and classrooms, especially at the elementary level, we have um, spaces that students can go um, called take a break spaces or calming corners where students can use strategies to help them regulate their emotions or feelings or behaviors, or to simply just take a break. Um, those those spaces can be designed at home as well and might just be a quiet place that your student feels safe and can go um, to do different activities that helps them manage their feelings or emotions at the time. Um, one way we can promote self-management is to just model for our children and just kind of monologue or speak out loud what we're doing when we feel a certain way. You know what? I'm starting to feel really frustrated. I'm going to go to my room for a couple minutes so I can calm down and collect myself so I can make a decision for what, what I need to do next to help you. Um, sometimes there's the, a framework called the concern feeling request framework. So um, when we're talking with our students, you know, my concern is your, your child can say this. My concern is that you have asked me to do this so many times today. I'm feeling annoyed by that. And I would like to request that you give me a deadline for doing that rather than continuing to say it um, so that I can figure out how to manage my time. That's just one example. Um, and then ways to strengthen social awareness is just to practice empathy. And, and there are so many ways to do that. Um, one way is to use an empathy prompt. That's a tool that kind of helps model and build a, a child's awareness of um, how people's actions and feelings can be connected. Um, so the other day, you brought me so much joy and you did X, Y, or Z. Thank you for making my day. Just pointing out. And sometimes these may be things that seem super obvious, but maybe your child doesn't realize how much they impacted someone in a positive way or how much someone impacted them in a positive way or a negative way. Um, 
model that active listening when you're having conversations with your kiddo, um, really sit down, you know, side by side and, and really listen, um, without interrupting or without asking too many questions, just hear what your kiddo has to say. Um, you know, it sounds like a big ask sometimes, and it might not happen every day, but making certain meals screen free times. It may be that sitting down to a family dinner is not working um, for your family, but maybe you have breakfast together. There are different ways that you can spend, you know, five minutes um, having that time to talk about how other people are feeling and what, what led to those feelings or or, or situations or just experiences that, that occur with family members. Um, a sense of gratitude really helps um, increase and strengthen um, children's social awareness and adults. Um, so you could, you know, keep a gratitude journal or just share each day one or two things that you, you were grateful for that day. Um, this can help also support perspective taking. So when you're reading a book or watching a show, um, pause it and, and comment, you know, like that, that seemed really hard for that character. Or if you're having a conversation, that sounds really hard for your friend. If that happened to you, what would you do? Um, just building in those conversations throughout the day um, can really help build social awareness for students. Um, and then because the SEL survey didn't really look at um, relationship skills, but you know we can help support that by just spending time um, with children and encouraging communication and, and encouraging those conversations. We can help students with resolving conflicts with others um, by working together in groups, um, discussing the different roles that, that are within groups. And then um, for the, the last competency area of responsible decision-making, we can support those skills by helping students, you know, think through all the parts of a problem, encourage students to make their own decisions, to set their own goals, to evaluate um, their progress toward those goals. Um, and, and then really think about like, what are the implications of our actions, our behaviors, our choices? Um, and, you know, none of us go at this alone. Um, teachers don't do this in a bubble. Counselors don't do this in a bubble. Principals don't do this in a bubble. Parents don't do this in a bubble. Um, we all work together to help strengthen and, um, and develop our students' social and emotional skills um, because we know that this helps promote really focused, um, good academic learning. Um, and um, if you have concerns about your child's social emotional development, there might not be, you know, there's not a wrong person to ask at school. We're all working together to help students that, you know, it could be you talk with your child's classroom teacher or teachers. It could be reaching out to a student services person, such as the social worker or the counselor or the psychologist. It could be reaching out to an administrator, a coach, um, really um, thinking about what your child needs and, and who might be best. And if we don't, um, you know, if someone doesn't have the right answer, you can always um, have your teacher connect you with some other school staff person or some other um, individual that can help. Um, and the next slide just shows a bit about how to do that. If you wanna learn more about social emotional learning, um, you can see the APS website. Um, castle.org is also another place to go to learn more about different um, competency areas um, for social emotional learning. Uh, and of course, um, taking a look at VDOE social emotional learning guidance framework as well. Um, what questions do you have? Well, before we turn to questions, Jenny, I, um, forgive me for interrupting, but I wanna make sure that before people have to log off and maybe get back to work, I wanted to thank you so much for offering this very thoughtful um, and helpful session. I think the very best kinds of sessions that we offer are ones that include practical tips. And you gave us so many of those wonderful tips that families can use at home. So thank you. Thank you to um, Wendy Crawford and Heather Davis.
um, and Jennifer Gross for helping to coordinate the session. We're also grateful and honored that one of our school board members joined us today. Mr. Goldstein is here. Um, Reed, thank you so much for your ongoing support of our students and staff and families, and we're glad you could join us today. Um, if anybody has any other words they'd like to share before we turn to questions, but feel free. All right, I see um, one of the questions is what instruction was given from school staff while administering the survey? And we 